Hello and welcome to episode 260 of the Heart of Markness Led Zeppelin podcast. That little piece of acoustic joy is from the show that we're going to deal with and listen to tonight. Deal with. We're going to finally deal with LA Forum 62777. It's gone on long enough. We got to do something. You're his mother, aren't you? So, yes, June 27th, 1977, the final night of the five-night marathon at the L.A. Forum. Legendary for the performances. Legendary for Keith Moon showing up with Bonzo. Legendary because they were recorded, with the exception of June 22nd, by St. Michael Millard. Or Millard. Millard, I think is how it's pronounced. The genius with the Nakamichi tape recorder, the custom battery pack he got from Japan, and the genius move of stuffing it all in a wheelchair, sitting on top of it, and rolling on in. Now, this is, according to the notes, one of the last, if not the last, wheelchair nights. Because, as the uh, person who wrote the notes to the show, who was also his partner, and that he wheeled him in, uh, kept watch and, as he says here, the uh, security was corrupt in that they were taking payments. They got paid for confiscating Mike's tapes and selling them to the bootleggers themselves. Now, Mike knew this and his guy knew this that wrote the notes and as such... He would, as he would switch tapes, pass them to his friend who would hold on to them. And they had a stash of shitty blanks that they would then surrender to security when he would get busted. And then security would be like, yay, we're making a couple hundred bucks or whatever off this tape. 1977 money. I don't know how much they got. But those same security guards who were corrupt would then be later uh, by Mike Millard himself bribed and paid to look the other way so the corruption worked both against and for mike as i understand but god bless him for doing what he did for recording it taking the time having the care to make these incredible recordings to then curate them and then after he unfortunately passed away about 30 years ago have them in the care of friends and uh, his mom as well, who just left everything untouched, so that the Gems Tape Group, which this is a release that just came out, I think it came out today, otherwise it came out yesterday, I saw on Dime a Dozen, which is good, because (laughs) the show that I had planned was Ipswich 1971, because I I spent the last week uh, listening to shows like I used to. It's been a while, because I've kind of... You, you ebb and flow. Uh, but I started listening to shows again while I'm doing other stuff, like while I'm playing video games or while I'm, you know, working on my taxes and shit. So I listened to the Ipswich show because Led Zeppelin Boots put up a new uh, complete version, Merge, on his channel. So I listened to it and it was amazing, which I knew. And then I knew I had covered it. I thought I had covered, but then I went back and looked at the spreadsheet. Thank you, Other David. See, wonderful resource of my shows and saw that I had not only covered it once, I had also covered it twice, including all the songs I wanted to highlight and songs I didn't. So sitting down to do my show and realizing that I'd already done it th- uh, twice, I kind of had to scramble. But luckily, about 10 minutes before I realized I'd done it switch not once but twice, I downloaded this show off of Dime, which is a uh, transfer from the Mike Millard Master Cassettes. Previous releases of this were of a off a DAT DAT copy from the Master Cassettes. So, I mean, qualitatively, they're both wonderful. This is, you know, just more for a. I don't know if it's more for a completist thing or if it's just a. It's a different release. So I grabbed it. And it is also tastefully remastered by Dadgad uh, through the Gems Group, which is brilliant. There's also a flat transfer available. And I used to go with those for the interests of purity. 
but my podcast is not for an interest of purity kind of podcast. My podcast is kind of a step right up, step right up. Look at all this amazing live shit. Did you know there were 8 million live Led Zeppelin shows taped and most of them are listenable, if not brilliant? No? And enjoy, which is my thing. Ring the bell. Get people in. Work in the front door kind of thing. The St. Peter. There we go. Nice and humble. Of Led Zeppelin heaven. Of the stairway to heaven. If you were. Sorry. Wow. Lots of words in my tummy today. All right. So, TLDR. I was going to do Ipswich, but did it twice already. So, I'm doing this one, which is 627, 1977, which I've already done, I'm sure, but not this version. So, technically correct. The best kind of correct. All right, friends. Let's jump into it. We are going to start with Sick Again. Because... Everybody on Earth likes this song, except me that much, but the live versions do slap with just the power. So sick again, friendos. Bow, 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 bow. Thank you. 
Yes, my friends, yes. Woo. Woo indeed. Everyone in the audience going woo. It's funny that they're old people now, and they were young then. I say this all the time, it's just crazy that almost 50 years ago, 47 years ago this year, Jesus, those guys were at that show listening. Everyone with an earshot of that is indelibly recorded for all history, and it's some point ai will be developed enough to extrapolate all kinds of extraneous data coalesce it together and juggle it together to where was mike millard seated what would be in range of that thing who had tickets to that and then they'll be able to say with a certain percentage of certainty that somebody saying woo was actually bill franklin of la jolla california or whatever maybe who knows doesn't matter does it nope all right that was pretty awesome Jimmy had some good stuff in there. Bonzo, of course, being the star of that, with that staggery, shuffly skip. There's a lot going on there, and he's good at it. Really? You're saying Led Zeppelin is good, Mark? I am. After six years, or however long it's been. How long has it been? Longer than six years. Seven years, maybe? Jesus Christ. Hundreds of episodes, yes. I have come to the conclusion that after a long duration... Led Zeppelin is good. Music is good. In fact, yes, Led Zeppelin is good. That is perfect. That's going on a coffee mug. Along with music is good to make it more appealing to others. Yes, I'm a genius. All right, since I'm not a genius, let's move along to the next show. The next little stop. Picture yourself. This is kind of an auditory uh, It's a Small World ride. You just rode through Sick Again, and now you're going to ride into Blues Land for Since I've Been Loving You. And I typically like Sick Again, and now I like it. Since I've Been Loving You, the 77 arrangements haven't really thrilled me, but I think for a lot of it, the first ones I listened to back in the day when I first started listening to bootlegs and buying them in record stores, etc., was Cleveland, uh, April 27th, that soundboard recording, which didn't give... Uh, that performance it didn't do any favors to that since I've been loving you performance and since I was expecting the smoking since I've been loving you from the song remains the same I was also like what the fuck is this so I kind of like this it's tasteful it's cool it has some neat runs in it Jimmy still wails it is more mature and a little more melancholic with perhaps the benefit of hindsight, it becomes a little more sorrowful. Oh my God, how profound, Mark. Since I've been loving you, friends, June 27th, 1977, fresh from the master cassette that St. Michael Millard put in the Nakamichi with his own hands. Blessings upon him. <laughs> Thank you. 
Patrick Sullivan. Well, I guess this is the last time around that we're going to be featuring, uh, at least for a while, the very nimble fingers. In fact, the very sneaky nimble fingers. In fact, the man who went to sleep last night with some strawberry tart in the pocket of his jeans, John Paul Jones, no quarter. <laughs> That was really nice. I liked that a lot. Way more than I thought I would. I mean, didn't you listen to this before, Mark? I didn't listen to the whole song. I listened to about half of it and said, oh, this is decent. I can do this. Um, yeah, so there's... <laughs> I've been a fan for 42 years now, and there's still more to discover. Like, I can uh, really dig some of the 77 Sibleys. And you know what else? I've grown even more as a person, and you'll find out soon after the spiel. The spiel is just the podcast, the business part of the podcast thing where I just have to tell you guys that there is a Facebook group with the name Heart of Markness that you are welcome to join with about 300 people who are about the coolest people in the world and nice. Everybody's nice. If you want to join and talk about Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin music, live music, classic rock, etc., go there. I'm also on X, which used to be Twitter. Um, not that active. I just basically retweet stuff and put the podcast up there, but because I don't like it anymore, it's really changed since, uh, Elon did his takeover and it's less effective a voice as it was for me, but you're welcome to join me there. I also have a YouTube channel, heart of Markness, where I put the podcast on YouTube as well. Uh, you're welcome to join me there. If you want to talk to me, Mark at heart of Markness is a great way to get me directly. Um, I also have a website. That's an important one. That's a big one. I should have talked about that earlier. The website, heartofmarkness.com. If you are new here, thank you for sticking it out this long. And um, heartofmarkness.com is a WordPress blog that I have where I post the podcasts every week. But in the body of the text, I also put a link where you can get the entire show that I'm talking about, not just the songs that I covered, but you'll be able to go there and grab this entire concert from June 27th, 1977, curated, restored by gems from the master cassette tapes of St. Mike Millard himself, and just about every other show that I've covered in my illustrious career here. You can find links to at theheartofmarkness.com, and all of this is courtesy of of the support of the Titans from the Titans upon whose shoulders rests this humble yet mighty podcast. I am of course, speaking of my patrons, patreon.com slash heart of Markness. If you want to help keep the lights on here, go over to patreon.com. See if there's something there for you. Uh, but they are currently a Laurel and Hardy handshake. Go out to Keith and Tilda, Steve, George, Big Ed, Kenny, John from West Footscray. Thank you, gentlemen. Picard, Rob from Melbourne, Australia, from the other side of the world and on the upside down part two. You know what? It is fall there. It is spring here. That's kind of weird. Thank you, Rob. Wayne, wonderful person, incredibly supportive for years. Wayne, I love you, man. Thank you so much. Brad, Danielle, whom I used to work with. Danielle, if you're still listening, thank you so much. Hope you're doing well. Tracy, ditto to you. My God, these are all friends of mine that I used to work with that continue to support me. I love you guys. Tracy's done me huge, 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 huge benefits in my life. He's a wonderful human being. As is other David, or the Supreme David. As is Bonzo Billy. And as is, of course... My very first patron, I think, sticking it out for all these years, Mimo. Thank you very much, friends. I love you and appreciate you all. Now, back to our show. 
All right, here's another one that I did not like most of the time. In fact, for years, decades, I only liked one performance of this song, and that was July 24th, 1979. Longtime listeners are like, oh, I know what he's going to play, and you are correct. Ten years gone. Now, why am I playing it from this show? Because there's a part where Jimmy goes right off the rails. But what I think happens is um, I think the strap slips off his shoulder and he just yanks it up or fixes it and as such the b bender on his telecaster which gives him that wow and is responsible for the firm the entirety of the firm um is activated the bending part of the b string is activated by pulling on his strap lock with the strap which is why he does his little shoulder wiggly wigglies and his little slithery <clears throat> slithery moves is by raising and lowering his shoulder or pushing on the guitar it pulls the uh strap lock and bends the string very interesting mechanism takes up like 90 percent of the interior of the guitar so it's more hollow body than solid at this point but um that's an exaggeration but uh yeah <clears throat> so he has a little mishap with that it sounds like or he just loses it for a second but the rest of the performance is quite nice and quite cool and quite facile so enjoy my friends 10 years gone from the mike millard master cassettes june 27th 1977 released by the gems tape group insured by fdic thank you 10 years gone guys it's really cool listen and if you are new to the live performances this is jimmy playing as i said his b bender telecaster for this song and it has john paul jones sitting down playing his triple neck acoustic which is a six string and 12 string guitar with a mandolin on top and it is really really lovely enjoy it friendos it's a nice performance <laughs> Thank you. 
you. Ten years gone. Had my stool sort in half. See the fresh saw marks there, you see that? That's what comes of working with the same road crew year after year. Smart set now that we are almost relieved to get to after 11 weeks on the road. We have a sit down. <laughs> Acceding to the pressures of life on the road, we bring to the front of the stage Mr. John Bonham, who's busy talking to the man who pays his wages. I kept the banter after the song <clears throat> because it was charming to me. They sawed his stool in half so that it would collapse when he sat on it. That's pretty funny. The kind of shit guys do, right? Ten years gone. All right, I stand by not being a huge fan of the 1977 performances. The uh, two 1979 performances are pretty kick-ass, but um, Ten Years Gone isn't really the kind of song you can stretch out and jam in. Or really find a groove because the groove is pretty complicated and you can't have Jonesy on the acoustic propping up the groove for Jimmy to solo to it's just not there uh, and he kind of I don't know what was up with that it was good I mean there was good stuff he had he had fluid fingers in lots of places definitely adventurous definitely trying to find the corner of something to, to really sink his teeth into. And it wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Robert, of course, rock solid. Jonesy, of course, rock solid. Bonzo, incredible that he can play gently and still be Bonzo. It's, um, I don't know, good stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed it all. Go to hardermarkness.com and grab this whole recording and listen to the whole show. There's brilliant stuff here. Man, you've got a rockin' Rock and whole lot of lo no, you don't. I'm thinking of Ipswich. I'm thinking of Ipswich again. This show is it's really nice. It is the only thing that keeps it from being great is that it pales in comparison to some of the earlier shows from this run. It is not as brilliant as June 21st, the 22nd, or the 23rd, but it's still great. It's still really fun. It's still LA. It has that LA vibe, and it's really enjoyable grab it. it that's what it's there for it's free mike millard taped this for you so that we could listen to this this is his dream years later listening to his handiwork and enjoying the clarity and ambiance of his recordings so let's do that and appreciate the master thank you very much i'll see you next sunday or i'll hear you i actually i won't you'll hear me next sunday hopefully inshallah and uh, please be good to yourselves and each other. Talk to you soon. Adios. I gotta go make spaghetti.